All right, so we'll talk about some severe weather again tonight, once again. Uh, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, and flash flooding remain threats to the plains into the Midwest into late week. Severe thunderstorms remain a threat in the plains of the Midwest. Damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes are possible. Flash flooding will also continue to be a concern. Parts of the Northeast could see severe thunderstorms on Thursday as well. And just to let you know, um, Sunday was a very uh, eventful day. We had three rounds of heavy rain. And two of the three times we had so much that we had flooded streets and sidewalks. So we continue to monitor that. But this is a broken record, basically, um, forecast, in my opinion. A particularly dangerous situation. That's a PDS tornado watch. Whatever. Valid until 10 p.m. tonight for southwestern central Oklahoma, northwestern Texas. Uh, this watch includes Oklahoma City, Norman, Lawton, Oklahoma, Wichita Falls, and Texas. A PDS tornado watch is valid until 11 p.m. for southeastern Kansas, uh, central and southwestern Missouri, and northeastern Oklahoma. This watch area includes Joplin, Missouri, Tulsa, Oklahoma. A tornado watch, just a regular tornado watch, where conditions are favorable and likely for tornado development is going to be for southeastern Iowa, western Illinois, northeastern Missouri. This watch area includes Peora, Illinois, and Columbia, Missouri. And we see here in the shaded red box here where we are going to be looking at the biggest threat of severe weather. This map was not lit up like it was yesterday. A large tornado was spotted on the ground southwest of the city of Oklahoma G. Wow, Oklahoma. Early Wednesday evening prompting the National Weather Service to issue a PDS situation tornado warning for northwestern uh, parts of uh, Ofka. Oak Fusky counties. Oak Fusky. Wow. I totally butchered that. Baseball size hail was reported in uh, that Oak Mugley area. The tornado uh, thunderstorm moved across the area. The National Weather Service, another PDS warning Wednesday for northwestern Rogers, southeastern Washington, and northeastern Tulsa counties in Oklahoma after a large tornado was spotted on the ground near Owasso, Oklahoma. The twister was headed in direction of Collinsville, Oklahoma. Wednesday night's forecast. Tonight, sun, uh, severe thunderstorms, locally heavy rain. Here is where we're looking at it. Now, nowhere near as bad as what we were talking about Monday night. But still, the very likely area, that's strong. That's a very strong possibility that we're going to see Joplin, Tulsa, parts into Missouri where we're going to have some very severe weather tonight. Nothing on the extreme side, but folks, since Monday, and as Mari reported earlier, uh, we were talking about um, 60 tornadoes uh, at last check since Monday. That's uh, two days ago, the 20th. Another round of severe storms will flare up in the plains on Thursday as a new upper-level system punches out of the Rockies, swapped from the west Texas into western Oklahoma, Kansas, southeastern Nebraska, and northwestern Missouri has the greatest chance of seeing severe thunderstorms with large hail, damaging wind, and tornadoes. Localized flash flooding will also be possible from Texas Panhandle northeastward into parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, eastern Nebraska, northwestern Missouri, and Iowa. Parts of the Northeast could also see scattered severe storms, damaging winds, and large hail. Portions of Pennsylvania have the greatest chance of seeing severe thunderstorms as well. Uh, and this goes into most of western New York and central New York, upstate New York. And again, Friday, here we go. I mean, the same areas that we just got through on Monday are looking at another severe possibility. Now, this is way, way weaker of a system than what we saw on Monday. But I'm gonna really show you some here in the um, the GFS and just, uh, I guess I'll get to that here in a second. But here's pretty much a recap of everything that uh, Mari has pretty much went over today in the video that she made. Uh, just crazy weather this week so far and it's only Wednesday. And we have continuing chances for more severe weather. But this one right here takes the cake. And the other article that I had picked out for this um, didn't even show the snowfall. It showed a picture of someone looking through a, a, a window with raindrops on it, walking with nothing but green in the background, talking about snow, no pictures, nothing. As of 8 a.m. Tuesday, Denver had officially received three and a half inches of snow. That's the most snow measured this late in May since 1975 when they got 
5.6. That's that really wet, heavy snow. Uh, in addition to snow, Denver tied the low temperature record May 21st, 31 degrees Tuesday morning. It was 31 degrees this date of 2001 when one inch of snow had fallen. In terms of high temperatures, Tuesday they will struggle to reach the lower 40s, making it the second day in a row with temperatures staying 30 to 35 degrees below normal. 30 to 35 days, folks. Look at that tree. It's cold still, and we are almost in June. Here we have areas since Tuesday. Keep in mind, Denver area usually sees only 1.7 inches in May each year, and about half the time we see no snow in May. So this is mind-boggling. Palmer Lake, 12 a foot. Black Forest, 11.3. Elizabeth, 11. Castle Rock, 9. Franktown, 7.1. Lone Tree, 5 inches. Parker, 5.4. Aurora, 4.0. Greenwood Village, 4.0. Denver, 3.4. Johnstown, 3 inches. Boulder, 3 inches. I mean, May 21st, folks. We are 10 days away from being the 1st of June, almost out of the spring season. This is the part of the year where we start to see 60s and 70s widespread. And we're talking about snow. And on the front side of this system, we're talking about severe weather. All quiet tonight in the south. Thank God for Texas, Oklahoma as well, getting a little bit of a break. This is the next three days. Not very encouraging if you ask me. Right now we have current tornado watches from Oklahoma through western Illinois, Missouri, parts of southeastern Kansas. Flood watches and warnings up all over central Kansas uh, near that Missouri state uh, borderline. Texas getting a bit of a break tonight. Everywhere else. Look at the size of this system too, guys. And that's what's heading towards the northeast. So that'll give uh, central New York, upstate New York, a chance of some thunderstorms late tonight into early tomorrow morning into the early part of the day. Let's take a look at our GFS real quick. So we'll start here going into Thursday. One thing I want you guys to pay attention to, we're still talking about snow in the higher elevations, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, still talking about snow, okay, tomorrow. Uh, look, we're going to move a little bit further in, and that snow kind of intensifies a little bit. More snowfall in Denver, possible. Uh, right now, it's looking like it's all rain, but in the higher elevations, we could see more snow. But while we're looking at the central, we have two low pressure systems that are moving off right now at the same time. One here in the northeast that will bring rain from Thursday or beginning of early Thursday into parts of Friday. Look at that. Just moderate to heavy stuff. But look at Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas again. And as we go into Friday, another system will redevelop. And look at this. Not the identical path as last time we saw this storm go over this way. Now we're talking just a little bit further north. This is the 25th, Saturday. And that system moves out to the northeast. And then look at this. The next day, another development of heavy to severe weather possible and directly the center part of Kansas. The panhandle of Texas, just moderate showers. Move it forward, it goes more into Missouri, into the Ohio Valley, into the northeast once again by Monday. And then, wow, another wall of moisture from the Dakotas all the way down to the panhandle of Texas. This will continue to move eastward. Now, this is just in three, four days from Friday. And this time, this system will stay mainly to the north. It will not trek the same path that we have seen over and over the past couple days. So it does look like we get a couple days of dry time, and then by the 29th, midweek next week, watch this area once again intensify and develop. Same spots. Same parts that we're looking at just Monday and today and tomorrow. It will be here next week this time as well. There's through the day Wednesday before it goes off into the uh, Northeast. Again, this looks like a chance for a mini severe weather outbreak for Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And then we got this cold front sweeping in here in the northern part of the United States. It's trying to make its way down into the lower 48. And it 
kisses Wisconsin and Minnesota. This is June 1st, folks. We have high pressure dominating and then back once again near Texas. Also, we got a storm in the Gulf. A lot of things happening here, guys, at the end of May going into June. Watch the Gulf here. I'll move this up so we can see this a little better. But we have something to brewing. Uh, we thought it was going to be on the eastern side of Florida. Now we have something approaching into the Gulf. It's going to connect with that low pressure system, kind of get its act together, and boy, does the moisture intensify. And again, more of the same for Texas, Oklahoma. It's not showing intensity right now, but it's still showing the same pattern of moisture redeveloping out of the same spot and continuing to move east into the same areas. Boy, look at this storm here in Florida. This thing kind of hovers around a little while. We got to watch this one. Uh, forget about Andrea. This little low pressure system right here will be in warmer waters by June 4th. And this is way, way out. So I, you know, you know how I feel about these 15, 16 day uh, forecasts. So I am not going to hang my hat on this yet, but it is a little concerning to see all this tropical moisture kind of just hang around. Parts of Miami could be getting a drenching here. And look, all I'm saying is as intense as this rain is, as it sticks around down there in Florida, and we've seen 16 inches in Japan and 14 inches here in India and 16 inches in Mozambique and just everywhere around the world, we've already seen heavy rain in a quick amount of time. And this storm right now appears to make an impact on the western part of the Florida Peninsula Tuesday, June 4th into Wednesday into Thursday, hanging around into Friday. So this could be a three-day rain event of heavy rain, monsoon rain at this point, if this model holds together. And this is still far away out. Honestly, I think this is where we can stop relying on the model right about here at the first. But I want you to notice, like several times in this forecast, GFS is picking up this pattern over and over again where we have heavy precipitation developing. And guys, this is right over the plains where we're trying to get farmers in the field. A friend of ours at the Grand Solar Minimum, he is a local or a contributor to the channel with footage and updates. Uh, Matt, out there in Nebraska, I wanna appreciate your uh, comments and your close messaging with me. He was telling me uh, about how many farmers out there in his neck of the woods are not gonna be able to plant on time. And some of them are struggling to get out in the fields because of all this rain, this constant flooding. Uh, again, guys, we invite comments from our um, our subscribers we want to hear from you about what's happening in your neck of the woods especially those of you who are in the south near the mississippi the delta areas of course the flooded out areas throughout nebraska south dakota iowa missouri oklahoma now and texas and kansas of course so lots of areas that are being affected right now and for those of you in the south who haven't seen much in the form of moisture your uh, your dry spell is going to come to an end here soon um i'd say somewhere around may 29th we start to see chances returning back to the deep south for chances for precipitation once again. And a lot of that has to do with that tropical moisture coming in through the Gulf. A very slow moving system that goes across the south into the 1st of June and also hangs around for a while. So we'll see what happens on a if there will be a pattern flip or not. At this point right now, we are seeing uh, pretty much the same pattern every other day. Every other two days, we have a new low pressure system that forms almost in the exact same spot. And yes, folks, July or June 7th, we are still talking about snow in the higher elevations. What is going on? Are you kidding me? And no one wants people to think that we're still hot and we're continuing to warm? Get out of here. All right, that's going to do it for me tonight. Mari, did you want to say hello to anybody in the chat before we head out of here? I guess I could check temperatures as well because I kind of want to see what that cold front does at the end of the month. But look at that. Hi, Jake. Hello. Boy, we got some fun people in the chat. Let me just uh, pull up here. Bee Friendly Permaculture is sending love from Australia. We have some Australia friends already tuning in to us, listening to what you have to say, Jake. I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you. I know I just asked you to come over here and say hi, but, you know, we're talking May 25th, and we're still looking at high temperatures in the 50s in the Northwest. And that's, you know, directly to all the moisture that we have, even in the parts where we're like, you know, Kansas and Nebraska, we should be in the 80s by now. 
and we're barely we will get to the 80s by maybe the first week of june and things might start to dry out i don't know but go ahead i'm sorry no problem g you know rain you haven't seen him in a while no uh he said he's down in uh south carolina now they had gonna get a heat wave yeah well they had 50 uh one night 50 that would be degrees fahrenheit and then days later they have a high of 102 so huge that's a huge temperature huge swing huge swings and I, I i didn't mean to neglect that folks there is a heat i've been talking about it for over a week but there is a heat wave coming to the deep south alabama georgia south carolina florida you guys could see temperatures in the triple digits a few times 105 degrees is the peak temperature right now they're forecasting for parts of georgia so something to watch here in the coming days as well folks uh thor Valhalla, he said in maine it's only 49 degrees which is cold very cold my heat would be on um herb way herb wag from wisconsin north wisconsin he had three to seven inches of snow last sunday Jeez. it's melted now um Let's see what else. Okay, and then Doug said he needs to get a GSM T-shirt soon, perhaps a hoodie, if mm. we're gonna start chilling off. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I need a hoodie myself. I do have a T-shirt. I'll show it off one night when I do a broadcast. But I, I, I want a hoodie too, Mari. Father's Day. Teespring. Father's is Day good. is coming up. We we also have merchandise on Threadless. I think Teespring's printing is better. And right now on Teespring, through the end of the month, we do have our promotion. We are offering 20% off uh, GSM merchandise. It's t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all that. Uh, you hey, use... Just in time for Father's Day. I mean, come on. Who who doesn't have a dad out there who's a weather fanatic? So you you know, this would be a great gift at 20% off. So just use promo code GSMLOVE. Uh, and we also have a little uh, advertisement slash flyer to reference in the community tab on our channel. If you need to reference that, the Teespring link and the promo code are right there for you. Um, let's see what else I got. Jake Green says poor uh, foreign market for clams and oysters in Washington State. They're sharing some some prices in the chat. Lady T is going to be moving to uh, where she say. I can see here she's going to start a homestead and she's thinking about starting to grow uh, bamboo. I don't have it written down. You guys are scrolling too quick for me to keep up. Bamboo, is she, is she in Texas? Where is Lady T at? I forgot where she is. I think she's up north, but now she's moving. Here, bam Oklahoma. Gotcha. She's moving too. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a proper, popular area for bamboo, I guess. But then David says bamboo in a tornado is not nice. No, no, <laughs> Which I'd no. have to agree. And right now, <laughs> Oklahoma is definitely, look... We're, before this year started, they were talking about how they believed that the Tornado Alley had moved east. Folks, Tornado Alley didn't go anywhere. In fact, it's right on cue. What we've seen over the last several days, tornadoes in Texas, and Oklahoma, Kansas, that is typical Tornado Alley. So there is no indication in my book that the Tornado Alley has moved east at all. So, yeah, she's moving from El Paso. Okay. There, so. Gotcha. Um. All right, that's all I have, Jake. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of stuff, but it's late and it's been a little bit. You've had a busy here. day. You made a great video today on the tornadoes. I, I encourage everyone to check it out. I actually watched it a couple times a day to kind of help myself Did understand. You? Well, I had to figure out what was going on today. Your fan, Jake? lots, lots of, lots I of action. It. Thank but you. Uh, so that's going to do it for us tonight, guys. Please like and share, and also subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Hit that notification bell to get all the latest updates on GrandSolarMinimum.com. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and our website, TheGrandSolarMinimum.com. And you will also find our Teespring store at the website as well. That's going to do it for us tonight, folks. Stay tuned. We will be back with another Grand Solar Minimum news update. Until then, we will talk soon, folks. Good night.